All right, um, <clears throat> I'm going to tell you I'm a little shaky this morning and uh, got some stuff going on in my house. So I am very, very grateful to see all of you here. I want to welcome you to the 2022 Beachwood Graduation Ceremony. Today, we will have the great honor to separate students in the class of 2022. I wanna express my gratitude to the students, the parents, staff, families who have joined us today. You have collectively worked to guide this group of talented and vastly different students to this moment when they will receive their diploma and be recognized for their years of work this class has had to relearn so much this year, being on time for class, being around big groups of people, navigating teaching and learning through masks, COVID tests on the weekly, social distancing, the list goes on. Their response to all of this has been a, demonstra a demonstration of resilience and perseverance that serves as an example. We did this together, sometimes gracefully, and at other times not so gracefully. You are the last group of students I had the opportunity to teach. You have made me laugh, made me frustrated, made me think, and even now, today, you are making me into an, a better administrator for this school. I continue to learn and grow so that I can do this job. My wish for you is that you, our graduating class, will recognize that learning is a lifelong process. You will grow wiser, you will grow older, and you will grow stronger. Never stop learning and challenging yourself. I want to take a moment to acknowledge our school advisory board who have provided a high level of support and guidance throughout the year. I want to express my gratitude, appreciation, and respect for the faculty at Beachwood School. This is a talented group of people who put in endless hours to provide a high level of instruction and a welcoming environment for your students. I know <clears throat> what you are facing and I'm grateful that you get up each day and that you are able to do so and you come to school to be here for each other and the students. To our parents, you are, you are an amazing group of individuals who I recognize want only the best for your children. I feel like a kindred spirit as I've been walking the same path as a parent with my own eighth grader finishing this year. We worry for our children, we fight for our children, and we will give anything to give them the best chance at a good life and a bright future. Thank you for the love and support you give your children every day. Hi. <laughs> we are grateful you are here today for this special event and congratulate you as parents on this special day. Congratulations to the family and to our graduating class of 2022. Let's move on with the program. I'd like to invite Kathy Connolly to the microphone and she will be uh, celebrating a member of our alumni uh, with the Alumni Award, and then we will get to hear from this special individual.
Good morning, everybody. Is this working? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. I'd like to introduce Joshua Nickings to all of you. Some of you know Joshua very well. Others of you are meeting him for the first time. Joshua is a young man of impeccable character, a talented artist, a diligent scholar, with a great sense of humor. Your principal at Eastside Prep, Chris Bischoff, is sending you a message, and I quote, Josh has been such a positive member of our school community, both in and out of the classroom. His love of learning and his caring for others have made him a great part of our Eastside community, end of quote. During high school, you studied digital art and became an assistant teacher in your senior year. You also tutored fellow students in math. When you entered Eastside four years ago, you decided to give the dorms a try, and it worked out well. You stepped out of your comfort zone again, joined the volleyball team, and eventually became captain and voted most valuable player. You designed an amazing logo, I wish we had it here, for your high school sweatshirts, all the while earning top grades. And you were a featured speaker at your graduation. He did a great job. Congratulations, Joshua, on your acceptance to one of the top universities in the country, Northwestern University, Chicago. Beachwood, how about that? Fantastic. Beachwood is de de delighted to present you with the 2022 Alumni Award, an engraved plaque and gift certificate. Your Beachwood friends are very proud of you, Joshua, and we trust and hope you will keep in touch. Congratulations. Okay, now we're going to hear from Joshua. So I'll get out of the way. Hello, students, faculty, friends, and family of Beachwood School and congratulations to the class of 2022. Four years ago, I was where you are now, ready for the next big chapter, high school. But before you go, I urge you to take a moment to reflect on your Beachwood experience, because you'll see how much you've grown during your elementary and middle school years and how well prepared you are to become a high school student. I have so many great memories of my time at Beachwood, reenacting historical moments in social studies, playing games in PE, making algebraic mosaics in math, creating the next Picasso in art, competing in spelling bees in English, filling our notebooks during nature walks in science, and singing the Spanish alphabet. Not to mention in the international food fairs and all the music and drama performances, um, but each of these experiences built a strong foundation for me going into high school, and I know that you all have your own set of experiences and great me excuse me, memories that you'll take with you to high school. When I reflect back on what I most appreciate about Beachwood, three factors come to mind. My teachers, were true mentors, supporting my growth, instilling strong work habits, and teaching me diligence, all of which prepared me well for the new expectations and greater workload that came with high school. The different electives and extracurricular activities that Beachwood introduced me to sparked my sense of curiosity, so when I got to high school, I sought out opportunities I never even knew existed. I found electives like digital illustration and computer science at my school that helped me find a passion for graphic design and engineering. I even decided to try out for our school volleyball team my freshman year and eventually became the team captain and was voted MVP. Finally, the strong sense of community at Beachwood gave me an appreciation for the importance of community in my life. And so I sought similar opportunities in high school, joining the boarding program where I, where I have made close friends who have become my family. All of this led to a fulfilling high school experience. For me, as I graduated last week, I will be heading off to Northwest Community University this fall pursuing a degree in mechanical engineering and graphic design. While you will each chart your own journey as I did, I encourage you to take all that you've learned here at Beachwood and use it to make the most of your own high school experience. I see great things for you all 
the Beachwood Class of 2022. Thank you and congratulations again. So each year we find ourselves in the position of both celebrating and saying goodbye to our graduates. At the same time, we must also say goodbye to families whose last enrolled child is graduating from the school. This year, we want to recognize six families who have shared a tremendous amount of their time with our community. Naming, Naming a few of those things they've done over the years, field trips, fundraising, parent-teacher conference, conferences, parent advisory leadership, helping with morning, recess, and lunch supervision, providing supplies, advocating for their children, supporting online learning during the pandemic, supporting the school in their efforts to prioritize health and safety during COVID. Years and hours of parent education and parent volunteering. This is just a few. We have parents in this class setting up yesterday. You have been steadfast in your love and support of your children. And as much as we are going to miss them, we're gonna miss you too. Please stand while I call your names and I ask that we hold all applause until the end. Jose Acosta and Alma Aguilar, Thelma Olivo and Sigfredo Hernandez, Aisha Fleming, Karen Ontiveros and Oswaldo Hurtado, Teresa Garcia and Fernando Ramirez, Alejandro and Michelle Vilches. One second. I'm missing. I'm just trying to make sure I did it right. Hold on, I'm not positive. Yes, let's give that applause now. Sorry. Thank you for all that you do. At this time, I'd like to... Is it me? Okay. At this time, I'd like to welcome Isabella Hill to the microphone. And uh, she's an amazing teacher. She's a dear friend and... Uh, true guide to the students. Good morning. You know what, I'm an English teacher, so here I go. In Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol, the main character, Ebenezer Scrooge, is visited by the ghosts of Christmas past, Christmas present, and Christmas future. Through the experience of revisiting his past, being shown what his future might be as a result, Scrooge wakes up and realizes that he will die lonely and despised if he continued living the way he has been living. He learns that it's not necessarily how you begin or what you've done, but how you choose to proceed that changes your end. Class of 2022. There's no hiding the fact it's been a tough year. Actually, it's been a tough two plus years, but that is Beachwood past. We have, stu we, have had, we have had students leave. We have had relationships change and break. We have cried, laughed, dined, hiked, vented, raged, joked, teased, roasted, encouraged, and learned together, all in Beachwood past. Here we are at Beachwood Present, together here at your graduation, an event that actually ties the past to the present to the future. Here right now, we are acknowledging your past, celebrating your present, and together looking at your future. So, how will you live your present? What will drive you? Scrooge was driven by fear. He was afraid of dying alone. He lost friends and loved ones in pursuit of wealth. 
Some of you here know what that's like. You're motivated by the fear of failing, by the fear of disappointing your loved ones. Others of you have been driven by emotions. Some of those emotions were strong. And still, others of you are motivated by the future. You know where you want to be in five years, what you want to be doing in 10 years, who you want to be in 20. That is what it means to be motivated by legacy. Legacy, think about this, is examining the present to change the future in order to affect your past. When fear drives you, you risk being constantly afraid. When emotions drive you, you risk getting stuck in that emotion. When legacy drives you, you're living with eyes on the future, but you're mindful of what you're leaving behind. In five years, what words will friends use to describe you? In 10 years, will you be angry? sad, alone, or connected and content and doing good work. In 20, who will be the ones in your life? Will you be able to look at yourself and what you've done and say, yeah, it's not bad. Today is that present, class of 2022. Take a close look at how you've chosen to live. Decide if it is how you would want to continue living because your future will be an extension of that. Each of you has no doubt left a legacy here at Beachwood, but you're moving on. As you leave, you're going to a place where guess what? You can create a new legacy. So my question and challenge is this, who will you be and what will you leave behind? Congratulations. It's that time. I can feel Jose Rendon's eyes from across the room. <laughs> um, because I'm gonna be the first speaker, I'm gonna beg your forgiveness, but I need to uh, adjust something slightly. Okay. So I'm gonna give some directions. Uh, those students that I will be speaking about are gonna do the most perfect job so that everyone has a chance to know what to do. Parents, when your student uh, when I call their name, you are going to approach with your son or daughter. We have seats here for you so you can have a front row view and, and really hear what's being said about them. They are then going to step to the mic here and have some special words really for you. Okay. And we want this to be a little intimate affair, but we are going to be taking some pictures of you with your child. <laughs> okay. Um, thank you, coach. So. Without further ado, <clears throat> I'd like to call Jose Morales to the stage. I'm going to have you come up on the stage with me to my left. Please, parents, come right here. We have these red rolling chairs. They're a little softer. I want you all to know that I love talking to Jose. When he walks through the front gate in the morning, he has different strides as he walks onto campus. Always steady, always measured. He sometimes arrives with his head up, eyes sparkling. On those days, I always want to know what added that sparkle. Was it something one of your parents said to you? Did Chris make you laugh? Whatever the source, it always makes me smile every time, even under this mask. Other days, he enters with a question on the ready or giving me a hard time. Hey, Mrs. Taylor is usually the lead in followed by, did you know? 
Do we have to? Can we? You get my meaning. What I treasure is that this young man is always willing to talk with me. Whether chatting about academic goals and how to achieve them or what I want him doing. <laughs> COVID, challenging situations, or what's happening over the weekend, I always enjoy our conversations. He has a mature sensibility and I hope he knows that. Jose is one of those students that makes you as a Beachwood adult feel seen. He treats me like a person, not like the, ooh, shh, the principal's here. He possesses a thoughtfulness and a patience that makes people enjoy being around him. This is balanced by a strength of character that has grown over the years. On the days when you arrive carrying a little more weight on your shoulders, I want you to know that I see you. I appreciate that you have trusted me over the years and I hope you know that I will continue to help shoulder that burden if you let me. Jose is a very intelligent and capable young person who is going to move on to an amazing academic and sports world in high school. I will miss seeing you, Jose, come through that gate. And I freely admit that my heart is going to take a hit when you walk through that gate for the last time today. But it's a gate, it's always open to you. It has been a pleasure, a highlight to get to know you, and I will miss you very much. begging your patience. Good morning, Beachwood families and class of 2022. For those who don't know my name, my name is Jose Morales. I've been at Beachwood for nine years, and out of all my years here, my favorite memory is when me, Natalie, uh, Adelia, and Anthony started a water balloon fight at the Big Field back in January. I don't know who started it, but I do remember that all of us went back to class soaking wet. Uh, throughout, throughout middle school, it was difficult, from going in in-person classes to online classes. It was no obvious stuff. Online classes taught me how to take more responsibility. I want to thank, thank Ms. Tang, because if it weren't for her, I don't think I'd be here talking right now. I also want to make, thank Mr. Zapata for making this school year fun and interesting. There was always something he had for us to do, whether it was watching telenovelas in class or learning in the garden. Lastly, I want to thank my mom because she always provided for our family with clothes, food, and the roof over our heads. I want, and I also wanted to thank my dad for all the deep conversations I've had with him about my education and choosing a right path in life. Gracias a mi madre y padre, los quiero muchísimo. Thank you, Jose, for being the first to the mic. Okay. Next, I would like to invite Yair Ontiveros to the stage. Please. 
A few weeks ago, I had the pleasure to join Yair and his parents at the Scholars Program for incoming freshmen at Sarah High School. It's been several years since they have held the event, and it was my absolute pleasure and honor to sit beside his parents for such a special occasion. This was an event held for a select group of students with an aptitude for study who are entering their first year. I open with this to help paint a picture of who Yair is, a highly motivated student with a mind that is always racing. There could be a number of reasons for this. As my grandmother used to say, number one, Yair is whip smart. From the moment he joined our school community, he has been absorbing information and speeding through work as if there was a pot of gold at the end of each assignment. Slow down has been uttered a few times by a teacher or two. Two, his parents have taught him the ethic that hard work pays off. Karen is always on the move and encourage her, encourages her family to do the same. During virtual learning, his parents kept him on task, even though I know there were days when it was a struggle to stay focused and tuned in during Zoom classes. Yet you did it. Yair is a very, number three, talented soccer player. Okay. How do I know this? Because I've seen him play. Specifically, I have seen him play against my son on the field. <laughs> my son is pretty fast too. So believe me when I say, Yair is fast on that field. He flies. It's still smarts. I think we lost that game. Did we lose that game? Uh, yeah. Rematch. I, did you say rematch? <laughs> now, returning for a moment to that night at Sarah High School, I want you to know that I was beyond proud of you. The work and effort you put in over the years is paying you back. Next year, you will be in an environment with others who, like you, absorb information like a sponge. You will be challenged, and you will rise to that challenge. I absolutely believe that. I also want you to know that on that night, my heart hurt a bit as I had to accept that it is time for you to move on. Congratulations, Jair. You have been a comet on the horizon at this school, and I wish you and your family the absolute best. Congratulations. Good morning, Beachwood family. My name is Yair Otiveros, and I have been at Beachwood for five years. I am overjoyed to be a part of this loving community. My fondest memory was when, as a class, we went on our fourth grade, fourth grade camping trip. My favorite part of the trip was when we were in the back of the bus playing on our phones, and Ben was hiding under his blanket because he was scared of the height we were at. Then, when we got to the campsite, we started having a sword fight with the tent poles. <laughs> I have enjoyed being a student at Beachwood because it is a small but loving community. Everyone knows and connects with each other. You can be an eighth grader and know, and know all the fifth graders and be able to converse with them. I'd like to thank Mr. Zapata for just being himself. Mr. Zapata never failed to put a smile on my face. He would always have something for us to do. I'd also like to thank Ms. Taylor for always being willing to help me and helping me fill out my recommendations for high school. I'd like to conclude my speech by also saying thanks to my mom, my dad, and my cousin Jay for helping me throughout this high school application journey. I'd like to end this off by saying a quote by Omar Khayyam. The quote reads, be happy for this moment. This moment is your life. This has been an amazing journey throughout middle school and I'm excited for what will come next. Thank you.
Catherine. I'm, I'm going to do Catherine right now. And, um, okay. As many of you know, we've had a lot of teachers in and out this week. And unfortunately today, Ms. Portheimer is unable to join us. In lieu of her being here, I am going to be speaking on her behalf about Ms. Natalie Guzman. Would you please come to the stage? Natalie, I want to first say thank you. You were one of the chillest kindergartners I ever taught. I could have probably left you in charge to teach the class. That is how much I trusted you. I remember that you also made such a lasting impression on your preschool teacher that she came to your kindergarten moving up ceremony. That shows how special you are. I enjoyed being Cynthia and your teacher so much that when Amy was born, I was thrilled that I had another Guzman girl to teach. I had to wait five years and mostly taught her over Zoom, but it was worth the wait. Natalie, you were such a calm and collected kindergartner that I remember you got in trouble only one time and I actually got extremely excited. <laughs> I honestly don't remember what you did because it wasn't a big deal, but I remember how guilty you felt. <laughs> Instead of giving you a consequence, I spent the next five minutes trying to calm you down. I was proud of you for taking a risk and making a mistake and reminded you that the guilt was your conscience telling you not to repeat the behavior. Why am I mentioning this? I guess it stood out to me because I felt like that was a sign of you having a good moral compass. I am also mentioning this because as you leave Beechwood, I want you to keep taking risks and making mistakes. Nine years later, you were still pretty calm and collected. To be honest, I'm a little jealous because I tend to be loud and talk too much. So I admire people who have the skills to be discreet. According to your mom, at home, it's a different story. <laughs> and you talk a lot. <laughs> you are so lucky to have a great family that encourages you to be yourself. You will always have a Beechwood family that cares a lot about you. And we are here to support you too, if you need it. Congratulations. and all I can say is that it's been quite a school year. So many ups and downs, but here we are. After nine years at Beechwood, I wish I could say I remember every school year. I've gotten close with many people and I appreciate all of them for that. A memory I remember the most this year was during lunch when a water pipe broke out. Jose, Adelia, Anthony started throwing water at each other and we all ended up in the field just throwing water until we ran out. We returned to class all soaked. All the teachers were just staring at us. A teacher, Mr. Zapata, someone who I could always talk to and just listen. More than anything, an interesting and understanding teacher. Sixth grade year, I actually passed this class. Oh my, that was a lot of work. Thank you to all the teachers who supported me and pushed me. Even though I don't always speak up, I appreciate all of you for that. Lastly, eso es para mis padres. My pa, gracias por todo. Nunca les podría dar las gracias por todo que han hecho por mí y todo el apoyo que me han dado. Los dos trabajan mucho para tener todo lo que tenemos y por darnos una mejor vida y educación. Por darnos lo mejor que puede y se esfuerzan todos los días sin parar. Aunque no soy perfecta, siempre trato y me esfuerzo. Pa, gracias por todas las veces que nomás te contaba de mi día y usted nomás escuchaba. Y todas las prácticas que hemos tenido. Gracias. Ma, gracias por todo, pero más por este año. 
Todas las noches que te, daba, que te quedabas conmigo cuando más te ocupaba, cuando te contaba de la vida, de lo que pasaba en la escuela, mis amigos y toda la tarea que me dejaban, siempre estabas ahí para escuchar. Nunca me has dejado rendirme. Siempre has estado aquí para mí y por todo, y por eso te lo agradezco. Gracias. Thank you to everyone. We did it. We actually finished eighth grade. Please join me in welcoming Angela Harrington to the stage. Monty. I don't think she suspected. No, I do. You did know! No, yes. When she went up there, I was like, it's either me or Sydney. <laughs> Come on up. <laughs> I think of my time with Monty much like the characters see memories in the movie Inside Out. One shining marble for each core memory. First, a red marble rolls in. Monty in a red shirt as my very first student at Beechwood. While I set up my classroom, Monty instructed my mom playing xylophones and wrapping her in a shining gold costume. Monty's vibrant imagination, then and now. Next, a lime green marble. As Tinkerbell, Monty opened Peter Pan Jr. confidently with an enchanting solo and captivating the audience with her warmth, humor, and mischief. <laughs> Ah, this one's covered in white paint. Monty, Ale, and Jalea priming the set for Susical during clubs. It was hilarious, productive, listening to Pandora, and possibly ruining some of their uniforms, sorry. For Susical, a teal and purple marble. Monty was featured as a bird girl, fake eyelashes and all. And the bird girls were the backbone of the cast. Strong actors, singers, and dancers. Oh, God, girl, you gotta keep it together, okay? <laughs> then a marble in deep black, swirled with silver sparkles like her costume. Monty playing, the, Monty playing the role of the witch, the first middle school play, Snow White, transforming into the commanding, sarcastic, regal, and iconic villain. Yellow marbles for our talks over lunch at the taqueria, featuring Monty's honesty, critiques, and laughter, too. And a dark green marble for today, your graduation. Monty, as you soar from Beechwood, I want you to remember those words you sang as Tinkerbell. Fly to who you are. Climb upon your star. Find your wings. Fly to your heart. I can't wait to hear, I can't wait to hear all the wonderful marble memories you make at Eastside. Taco date soon. <laughs> Um, good morning, teachers and parents. My name is Monty. I not only want to give thanks to in influential people in my life, but to myself. I want to thank Mrs. Hill for always pushing me to do my best, and even in my most hardest times in middle school, like when I was trying to get my grades up. <laughs> Sorry. She helped me and gave me support. She has also been very patient with me and always giving me good advice from her own experiences and stories about her family. 
I also want to thank my mom for being my biggest supporter <laughs> and cheerleader and being patient with me and trying to help me even though I don't listen. <laughs> I also want to thank you for the check-ins before and after school, even though sometimes I got annoyed and didn't want to talk. I really appreciate it. I want to thank my friends for supporting me, giving me guidance from a different perspective and always keeping good humor. We always know how to make each other smile and laugh and even at our worst moments, <laughs> at our worst moments, sorry. I'm gonna miss not seeing my friends every day during the school. I'm gonna miss not making jokes during class. I'm gonna miss going places after school. I'm gonna miss spending time with each other every day. But now we're going off to high school <laughs> on our own paths, making our own decisions making new friends and moving on. I really am gonna miss everyone. My dearest friends, Tay, Ale, Julia, Senya, and Idana. Thank you for making my time here at Be Beachwood the best it could be. Now I wanna thank, take this time to thank myself, give myself praise for not giving up and even in my hard times, trying to keep myself going. I'm glad to have finished off the year strong with all this love and support. And once again, thank you to everyone who gives who has given me guidance and support throughout this whole year. I really couldn't have made it through without everyone's support. Thank you. I have a wonderful assistant, so just know my, my performers out there, you too can help me with these things. <laughs> Thank you, Giselle. Alessandra. Ale, it has been a joy watching you grow as a performer and young woman. As a third grader, we loved you as a subble lubble, a leather jacket wearing tough fish in the sea in the journey of the noble narwhal. That same year, you and Brianna, a duo as iconic as peanut butter and jelly, were cast as T Tiger Lily's all-girl tribe, advocating for recognition of girl power. And when you were in sixth grade, your scene as the mirror alongside Talon as the king in Snow White still reigns as one of the most hilarious scenes on the Beachwood stage. In Seussical, Ale played Amazing Maisie, the flashy bird in red sequence, notorious for her long and beautiful tail. The role of Maisie needed an actor who could portray a larger than life personality, confident, with a flair for the dramatic, a sense of style, a keen dancing ability, and of course, a voice that can carry. Enter Alessandra Vilches. <laughs> Ale and a small group of middle schoolers put on a fantastic Disney review this year. Ale sang a beautiful solo from Cinderella and she played Tia Peppa to Julia's Felix in We Don't Talk About Bruno. I'm still so proud of your performance and leadership, Ale. Ale has had many wonderful moments in the spotlight here at Beachwood. But Maisie said it herself, I need something different, I crave something new. Hey, maybe you could think of something different to do. And so, Ale, you're taking your bow at Beechwood, but know that this is only intermission. The curtain is rising for act two, Alessandra at Tide, something different and new, 
And frankly, it might be an even more challenging but rewarding role. All the world's a stage, so get out there and show us what you can do. I'd love to cheer you on from the front row. trying not to mess up my makeup. Okay. Good morning, Beachwood families. Nine whole years I have been here. Nine whole years. Same people all day, every day. And I realized how crazy that is. I didn't think it would go by so quickly, but it did. I want to honor all my role models for the nine years I have been here. My parents and my siblings. I'm grateful. I'm grateful to my family because they pushed me through and through and I don't think I could have done anything without them. On the nights where I'd cry because I had over 10 missing assignments, my brother and my dad would tell me to calm down and be a man. I'm joking, but not really. Alina and Ma, thank you for letting me express myself during some really difficult times to the point where I'd be crying. I love and appreciate you all. Mrs. Hill, you don't understand how much you mean to me. Each moment we talk, your words would own, your words would become more encouraging. And to Mrs. Taylor, your small, have a wonderful rest of your day, comments in the morning made me feel better. And to all my friends who always knew how to keep a smile on my face, Senia, Jalia, Irana, Monty, and Taylor. I'll always remember the, the jokes, the picnics including the scarce food that nobody had. You're some of the only reasons, you're some of the only reasons why I have the courage to wake up in the morning. I'm proud of all six of us. My name is Alessandra Vilches, and to all my people, I'll miss you a lot. Thank you. Please join me in welcoming Isabel Solis, our mathematics expert to the stage. Um, my time here at Beachwood has been short, and I definitely haven't had a long career, but I can safely say that Diego Nieves is one of the most wild card students that I've ever encountered. Since day one of seventh grade, you have managed to surprise me each day with your random yet hilarious thoughts, your Naruto runs, a great capacity for kindness, and a very vivid memory. One of my core memories from my first year here at Beachwood was when this class, played Among Us after one of our Zoom sessions one day, and during one round, I was eliminated, and in the spur of the moment, I accidentally let a curse word slip, um, and he was so shocked, he yelled, he's like, oh my god, you, you said it, you said the bad word, and um, I thought that that would be the end of it, um, thought that would be quickly forgotten, uh, but I was wrong, he, he brought it up a lot throughout the years. <laughs> he would bring it up during the most random of times, and often caused me to break down in laughter. And thank you, I really needed that this year. 
When we returned in person to the school year, I got to see more of that silly side as you would insert any and all references to Fortnite in math class. But on the flip side, I got to see the mature and kind side as you would help try to help quiet down some of your classmates when you saw me struggling. Please know I really appreciated that and I really appreciated your presence this year. I'm excited to see what adventures high school will bring and I wish you all the best. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, I'm Diego Nieves, and I came to Beechwood when I was five. I started school at Beechwood in kindergarten during the summer. I've been at Beechwood for nine years now. At Beechwood, I met many friends. I've also seen people come and go. Beechwood to me is a great school. The teachers, the teachers <laughs> helped me achieve one of my biggest goals, which is graduating. Not just the middle school teachers, but including the elementary school, school teachers who taught me important lessons like good sportsmanship and many others that helped me become a better person. My earliest Beechwood memory is playing soccer in front of the kindergarten classroom. I remember Enrique coming up to me and asking if he can play too. We started playing soccer, then others joined like it joined in like Jose and Javi. My favorite, my favorite memory at Beechwood is the summer school field trips. I really enjoyed the whale watching trip and kayaking at shoreline with, with Mr. P. The whale watching trip was really fun. I drank around four Coca-Colas and one Sprite. I decided not to eat anything since I would get, uh, get seasick and vomit. Others were already vomiting. <laughs> I remember sitting inside the boat with Alex and Anthony eating Doritos. We also saw a shark that was following us for a little. I loved kayaking since it was my first time doing it, but I really enjoyed it. I had a race against Enrique and Alex. On my team, it was Yair. We also had a little fight with the paddles, whacking each other's kayaks to slow each other down. After the kayaking, we got ice cream. I want to thank my mom and dad for helping me along the way with applications and help, helping me with homework. I also want to thank Miss, Miss Hill for making us laugh in the mornings and helping us graduate. Miss Hill got us prepared for big essays and helped me write them better than I used to, since I wasn't good at writing essays. Miss Hill also set up field, field trips before we graduate. To me, that's amazing since last year didn't have any. <laughs> Thank you for listening to my speech. Please join me in welcoming Ms. Still to the stage. Hello? Okay. Enrique Mendoza. I will speak of Enrique. His friends call him Kike. He smiles like he knows stuff, not needing to act tough. But he's, he's not really quiet, but also not loud. If he can try it, he won't be cowed. Making elephant toothpaste in front of a crowd. Always trying his best, experimenting with tests, puts curiosity to rest and accepts the quest. 
Every day he shows up, aims to fill up his cup, and to meet each hard thing, old lessons he brings. Stepping up each new rung, even if he got stung, cause the next one might be a place where he'll see just what more is in store and walk through that door. You have people in line who are just right behind, keeping good thoughts in mind. Your loving parents and Mia, who are so proud to see ya, knowing you are just right with that strong inner light. A moment like this can seem a big leap, but I want to remind you that change doesn't sleep. So remember you've got this, you always did. For every mistake up the ladder you're led. The trick is to take it one step at a time, just like I did when I wrote out this rhyme. Dedicated to you and your beautiful now, Kike, I wish you the best with a bow. I've been at Beachwood uh, for the last nine years. Uh, I wanna thank everyone for being there for me. Out of these nine years, I've made amazing memories to remember. One of the many memories I've made was when my class and I went to Big Basin with Mr. C and Mr. O. It's a nice memory to remember up to this day. I had a great experience with my class those couple of days. My favorite part of the trip was when we were trying to figure out how to get into the hollow tree by our campsite. It was pretty slippery to get into, but was this was easy. We had a flashlight and saw spiderwebs at the very top, uh, and it was kind of scary. Uh, it was weird because I'd never been inside a hollow tree before, but it was a nice experience. This is a memory that I won't forget because it was the first time I had a camping trip with my class, and it was a lot of fun. I am grateful for the Beecher community here. Yeah for my family for helping me get this far and to the point I'm going on to high school. The third and fourth quarter of this year was a struggle, but thanks to all the amazing teachers here today, they helped me overcome my struggles with the, on these last two quarters. I'm grateful for my parents for helping me get this far as well, because without them, I wouldn't be here today. The reason being is because when I was struggling, they always helped me to get all my work done. Also, when I didn't want to do my homework, my dad always reminded me why I was doing all this hard work for. He encouraged me to get it all done. In conclusion, I read a very motivational quote that I want to share today. It says, nothing and nobody can stop you if you work hard and believe in yourself. I just want to give a big thanks to my parents, teachers, classmates, and friends outside of the school for supporting me in every way possible and to help me getting to this point. Thank you. Alex Ramirez. Okay. Alex, you're fun. Your own unique one. Your attention unbound catches each sound. Those times we had class in the field on the grass, sending rockets in flight, distance, time, and might. Learning from doing keeps the wonder brewing, and focus is found, your feet on the ground. In the real world, you play, knowing that someday it won't be the same, so why not play a game? Every smile, laugh, and poke, all the times you made jokes, 
making laughter the plan. Skip to class if you can. Let the, mis the, let the music you hear be the gift that you wear, dancing all the way through as you grew and you grew. I remember your, your face, upward smiling, such grace, wonder filling the space where you offer your presence, your gift in its essence. You will know it with age. Every season and stage is a moment to savor, attend to the flavor. Your senses unbound are a way to be found. Let what you know be true, help you be your best you as you make your way through. Know you have what it takes to make life feel great. You've done that for others. I'm just one and your mother is. For your friends and your teachers, you make sounds like creatures. <laughs> Laughter medicine you offer like the sky brings us water. Be well, Alex, my friend until we meet again. Hello. Good morning, everyone. My name is Alex Ramirez, and I have been in Beachwood since the fourth grade. On my shadow day, I didn't really know that many people, even though we had gone through saying our names. At recess, Ben came up to me and asked me if I wanted to race him. I said, sure. And this journey through Beachwood has been a race ever since. My earliest Beachwood memory has to be when we went to the fourth grade, um, fourth grade camping trip. We had gone to Portola Valley and on the way there, Diego had made videos that he would later post on his YouTube channel. That was the first time I thought I, I would become famous. <laughs> Moving up to middle to middle school, one teacher I would like to point out, Mrs. Hill. She was always super helpful and would always help me keep on track. She helped me go through some rough assignments and she was just super kind and funny. I remember her I remember her telling funny stories about her younger son Sam. Even though we didn't have her the whole eighth grade year or eighth grade, I am really going to miss you. So thank you. I would also like to give a big thanks to my parents. Without them, I wouldn't be here in the first place. I'm just so grateful to have them in my life. Again, thank you for all that you've done for me. Gracias, Papa, por todo que hiciste. También mi mamá. Now my greatest memory has to be when we went to Monterey in the sixth grade. I really enjoyed having ice cream at night and going to the beach. I remember we collected seashells and found uh, sea urchins. The rocks were super slippery, so I kind of got my shoes wet. Um, now I have reached the finish line, and I'm going to miss you all. Thank you. Please join me in welcoming Mr. Chavez, Mr. Sebastian Chavez, to the mic. Irana. I started off, oh, I have to start off saying I felt pretty confident about my speech this morning, and then I didn't because Irana kind of discouraged me. <laughs> but that's Irana, but I'll, I'll read it anyway. So I debated whether or not to bring up um, an anecdote, and ultimately I'm choosing to share it, but don't hate me. Um, as many of you know, Irana, my younger brother, and Benji all went to the Bellhaven CDC together. What? 12 years now? 12 years ago now? <laughs> and 
One of my favorite memories is my brother coming home and telling us, very concerned, Irana said, I'm her boyfriend now. And he wasn't, he wasn't concerned about the boyfriend part. He was concerned about the fact that, and I quote, he didn't have money to help her. Because in his eyes, being a boyfriend means <laughs> he had to be the providing husband. <laughs> so this story and others like it, they highlight the kind of person Irana is. Not only is she creative, to say the least, <laughs> She's driven and about what she wants and how she wants it. As I've gotten to know her more in her later years, I have learned that this remains true. Irana is capable of achieving whatever she sets her mind to. Also, her ability to thrive in both communal and personal spaces further proves the versatility of her character. And at times it seems that Irana is off in her own world. I would know because sometimes she spaces out when I'm talking to her. <laughs> right. <laughs> Um, but it's really, but in my experience, however, it's that she's so carefully immersed in whatever space she occupies that she becomes a silent observer, further fueling her creativity. It's a feat not many people can master, and to be so young and already excelling and honing this skill is yet another example of your capabilities. Irana, this next step in your life is another opportunity for you to gather the world around you and decide which pieces best suit you in that moment. High school is a time, I got lost here. High school is a time to discover who and what you wish to be through various trials and errors. And there's gonna be a lot of errors. Hopefully, that's how we grow. <laughs> Don't be afraid to take risks and continue. You can see my leg quivering here, Ms. Taylor. <laughs> Nurturing the creativity that exists within you. As you move into new space and surround yourself with different people, remember that most important lesson we learn are experience through discomfort. When you choose to keep moving forward and claim the life you want for yourself, despite all the setbacks, you will experience a success like none you have seen before. I wish you the happiest experiences at Waldorf, and I'm confident of your inevitable success. Congratulations. My name is Irana. I've been here for 10 years. It all started in kinder prep, the OGs. When I look back, all I think about is my height. I mean, now I'm already taller than my mom. Of course, my height wasn't the only thing that's changed. It was my love for the school that grew. The memories I gained throughout this whole experience, some good and some bad. Each day became harder the more we grew, but also fun. There might've been some days where we couldn't pull through, but look at us now, graduating. I'm not gonna lie, eighth grade was kind of hard. For the first time in my life, I saw an F for one of my grades but at the end of the quarter, I raised it to a B. All because I pulled through and because of my mom's help. I'm grateful and thankful for my mom. I'm grateful for her getting mad at me when my grades didn't look so good. Some, some real moral support right there. Because of her, I got to have a great education, love and knowing I'll be alive the next day. She has been with me throughout my hard times. My mom is the only woman I see as an inspiration and someone I cherish and value in life. We've been through tough times, but I'm happy to have a mother like her in my life. Most of all, I'm thankful for myself. Because one, I'm graduating. I made it through all these years. I put up with all the work. I didn't give up sometimes. I got good grades. Let's just excuse that if I said it well back. I'm probably not gonna miss this school. Like I said, I've been here for 10 years, too long. I probably might miss some people here, but as Senya and I always say, life goes on. Thank you.
So I had the pleasure of co-coaching Adelia in volleyball this year with Coach. Um, and throughout the season, I witnessed growth in Adelia both as a volleyball player and as a person. During the season, Adelia consistently showed up to practices with a can-do attitude and zest that inspired her teammates and us as coaches. When new forms were introduced or a challenging move was taught, or cuando me encontraban de mal humor, <laughs> Adelia never gave up. She practiced until she felt like she had succeeded. She asked for help when she felt lost. And she persevered through the losses we experienced as a team. Her most stellar trait was her ability to laugh through the failures and lift herself and her team up when faced with adversities. Along with her abilities as a team player, Adelia frequently spread love and respect towards her community. In my time at Beachwood, I have learned quite a bit about students, specifically middle school, yet the most important part for me, middle schoolers are grumpy in the morning. <laughs> so while many students will stare blankly at me as I wave good morning, Adelia was one of the few who always greeted me with a huge smile, engaged in bilingual conversations, and occasionally sassed me. And as a teacher, I hope you understand that this daily gesture means more to us than you know. We don't always get to see a smiling face at us, and when we do, it's like pure gold for us. The fact that you always made sure you started your morning by making us as teachers feel safe and welcome shows just how much love and appreciation you have for yourself, your community, and the people who are closest to you. Adelia, while at times it has felt that you don't belong or you are in the wrong place, know that you are right where you need to be. You have prevailed through so much this year and you have shown that you are resilient and strong. I hope you teach these traits to your sister and I pray that in high school and life, you continue to brighten the days and lives of all the people you interact with. And you best keep in contact with me because Gabby will be in my class next year and you best believe I will be gossiping with her about your life, okay? <laughs> Congratulations. Hi everyone, my name is Adalia Mejia. These past three years I have had ups and downs, but here I am, graduating as part of the Beachwood class of 2022. My earliest Beachwood memory was when I first walked into the social studies classroom on my first day of sixth grade. I walked towards Natalie and asked her if I could sit next to her. She said yes, and here we are to this day, best friends. The memories that I always keep with me are the laughs and jokes that my friend group made every day. Natalie, Jose M, Yair, Anthony, Alex, and Jose R. My favorite memory was when we had a water fight. It was just a normal day, school day, and it ended up being one of my most favorite days of this entire school year. To this day, we still don't know who started the water fight. Natalie. <laughs> in addition to memories, Beachwood has helped me grow in many different ways that I, that I will always be beyond grateful for. Mrs. Taylor and Mrs. Hill, you both are the teachers that kept me going. You never gave up on me, even when I would give up on myself. I struggled a lot in the beginning of sixth grade and you both and my parents were the first witnesses of that. <laughs> my parents and teachers know how hard it was for me, but look at me now, graduating because I did not give up on myself and neither did they. So thank you. <laughs> Dad, <laughs> you've seen me struggle with homework and you've showed me your old school ways. And though I wouldn't like your ways and gave you a hard time, you were always there staying up for as long as you needed to even though you had to wake up <clears throat> super early in the morning for work. <laughs> the motivation and life advice you, you gave me, I will, I will always keep with me. Mom, you've guided me through these, um, through these 14 years and I wouldn't have been able to do any of this without you. Since day one, you promised to always be there for me and you've kept your promise, even though I may be a pain. <laughs> Thank you for the support and encouragement you have given me. The advice and motivation to help me keep thriving has brought me to where I am now. 
Finally, I was unstoppable, not because I did not have failures or doubts, but because I continued on despite them. Thank you. Please join me in welcoming Mrs. Megan Tang. Good morning. I'd like to call up Taylin Martin. As you make your way up, I just want to say that it was a beautiful full circle moment this morning. Um, some of my earliest memories of you are walking by my office when you were younger after getting a tardy slip on your way to class and yelling out through my door, good morning, Taylin. And I really wanted to shout that out as you were running up for graduation. So good morning, Taylin. <laughs> There's a lot of pressure at graduation to get a student right. So to start, I went straight to the source, your own writing. In seventh grade, in a piece titled, Who Am I? You described yourself in this way. My unique physical traits are my soft, short, curly hair, my brown eyes, my brown skin, my small lips, and the tiny mole on my right cheek. My personality is goofy, annoying, sensitive, persuasive, nosy, and outgoing. I'm goofy because whenever I do something or silly, I laugh at myself. I've been told by my mother that I'm annoying. That's because I like most of the attention on me. I am also sensitive and feel things deeply, even when it doesn't seem like I do. Another trait is that I am persuasive. Whenever I'm at the store, I beg my mother for a piece of candy or to get my favorite ice cream. I am so persuasive, I can often get what I ask for. Lastly, I'm nosy, because whenever my mom is on the phone or talking to someone, I sometimes stop breathing so I can hear what she is talking about. Are you breathing right now? In French, Taylin is a modern variant of the boy's name Talon, which means large claw of a bird of prey. Fitting, because for every challenge, you sink your claws into them, facing them head on and demonstrating growth. From persevering in solving math problems, to managing emotions and navigating friendships, to developing strong study skills and work habits, to advocating for yourself and the people you care about. Not to mention putting yourself out there in school performances and learning new sports too. When the pandemic hit, you shattered expectations and demonstrated, I would argue, the most progress in the school. You have what we like to call a growth mindset. With a growth mindset, students continually work to improve their skills, leading to greater growth and ultimately success. Today is a day for you to pause for a moment and soak it all in. Taylin, you're a runner, so I will wrap things up in those terms. Having weathered injury and challenges and other hardship, you now sprint ahead with the finish line in sight. Our role all along has been as your cheerleaders, encouraging you, pushing you, urging you to keep moving forward. Some might call this race a marathon. After all, many of us here remember you when you were just a tiny little kinder prepper at age five. But you leave today an incredible young woman. Aisha, how proud you must be. Congratulations, Taylin. Hey y'all, I'm Taylin. Good morning to friends and future families. 
School is like a game with many levels of pass. I've been here since the... I've been here since the first go and each level has gotten difficult, but also exciting. Throughout the years here at Beechwood, I can definitely agree with my teachers when they said I've improved, improved on my confidence in academics and reaching out to my teachers. I'm grateful for all the teachers that have worked with me during my, whole, my hard times. Mostly coming from losing friends I've known since the beginning. Not only am I going to miss this school, but I'm also going to miss the memories I've made here. And the hard part about it is thinking about forgetting all of them as I move on in life. But right now, this is a memory I'll probably never forget. The feeling of graduation is the best feeling I can feel. The feeling of accomplishment and completion. completion. Now to give thanks, I want to thank my friends, Ale, Monty, Zenia, Jalia, and Irana for making every day at school easier. Mom, thank you for the love and care you give me each day. And lastly, Dad, I want to thank you for the calls and encouraging me to keep me, to keep me going in school and in sports. Even though you're not here all the time, it still feels like you're here cheering me. You're physically here cheering me on. Dad, thanks for being my biggest supporter. Thank you, guys. One last thing, I started the water fight. <laughs> Please join me in welcoming back Mrs. Isabella Hill. Uh, Jose Renton. met Jose as a head, a set of shoulders, and a chest on a screen. There he was, a face in a box on Zoom. So when we finally met him in person, we were like, whoa, is that really you? <laughs> Jose Rendon fills space like no other. I'm not just talking about his physical presence. I'm referring to the depth of his character and his capacity for knowledge. His presence can be intimidating, but he is surprisingly accessible and kind. He has established lasting and loyal friendships in his short time here and filled relational spaces where friendships have faltered or failed. Jose has a depth of character seldom possessed by a 13-year-old boy. He has a heart for justice and pursues the truth of any given situation. He gathers information, searches for relevant evidence before developing an argument that makes sense. He isn't always right, but is often just and certainly true to his understanding of a situation. I have no doubt that one day Jose will be sitting in front of us as a justice of the court. I hope that when that day comes, that you, Jose, will fight for the truth and speak for the weak. Your teachers have been profoundly impressed by your thirst for knowledge. Your drive to know and understand is immense. Your capacity for learning is massive. It's been fun, Jose, to challenge you and to be challenged by you. You are not satisfied with being spoon-fed information. You're not satiated with the easy way out or minimum requirements. The quality of your academic work must first pass your own high standards. Peers may and have criticized or disliked you for this drive. Some may call it what it isn't, but stick to your work ethic, my friend. With humility, continue pursuing knowledge and understanding. One day, those same people may appear before you pleading for you to be just on their behalf. Those who tease may one day require your help. May you have the humility to help them. It has been an honor to be your teacher. 
Thank you for giving me that opportunity and congratulations. Greetings Beachwood. My name is Jose Rendon and I want to share my experience here. I remember my first time at Beachwood was when the class went to campus for orientation during hybrid learning in seventh grade. There I met Javier and Jose M who struck up a conversation with me. Although we were nervous, uh, we started talking to each other mainly about Jose's hair. I remember feeling comfortable and joyful knowing that two people I met that day wanted to be my friends. Jose ended up introducing me to most friends that I have now and I am extremely thankful for that. With my peers, friends, and staff, and teachers, I've had a unique and fun experience. Whenever I struggled, Mrs. Hill was always there to help me out, and for that, I couldn't be more grateful. Without teachers like Mrs. Hill being there for me, I would have never made it through this year. With such great support and teaching from all staff, I know I am ready to go into the world and move on to high school. I feel prepared to experience more life and learn new things. In life, I feel like I can accomplish my dream of becoming a lawyer now, all because of the amazing environment and atmosphere at Beachwood. For all my teachers who made the class interesting, exciting, and engaging, thank you. To all my close friends and classmates who are there for me this year, thank you. To my family, especially my dad, who was there, who was there for me from the beginning to the end of my time here, thank you. You were always supportive of whatever I wanted to do, and that is truly the greatest gift ever. Although my time here was short, I've had an astonishing experience at Beachwood. Thank you all. Mr. Anthony Acosta. Anthony is full of surprises. At first acquaintance, he appears to be respectful, gentle, sensitive, and somewhat shy. All these qualities are absolutely true of Anthony. But get to know him a little bit more, and other qualities emerge. Anthony is funny, he is talkative, and he's a little bit sneaky. <laughs> his friends appreciate his loyalty, his neutrality, and his ability to just go with what has been decided. At the start of this school year, the eighth graders were asked to write an essay based on a personal value. This value must serve as a base for a personal belief in life and how it should be lived. Anthony wrote his essay on the power of God. He wrote about the love he has for his sisters because of the love God has for him. Anthony then recorded his essay. I was uh, astonished and blown away by the tone and conviction in his voice. I didn't know you had it in you, Anthony. Up until this point, I honestly thought he was someone who didn't have strong feelings, since he was always so happy to just go along. Go along with his classmates' ideas, Go along with corrections suggested by his teachers. Go along with what has been chosen for him. But his essay showed otherwise. It reflects a young man who absolutely knows what he believes and how he is choosing to live his life. It reflects how he approaches relationships with his family and his friends. 
It shows how someone can indeed have strong passions, solid beliefs and opinions, yet be someone who aims for resolution rather than conflict. Anthony, hold on to those qualities of quiet strength, unwavering convictions, and undeniable love. You will draw people to you and facilitate reconciliation. Congratulations, Anthony. Greetings. Uh, my name is Anthony Acosta. I have been at Beachwood for 10 years. I've always been a very shy person and I never could shed that skin off. But over time, I got a little more confident because I always try to push myself. Like I remember in the beginning of our eighth grade year, we would always present science. And this time when we presented, I tried to push myself into going for it. And I went and I saw it was good to go almost first because you get it over with. So this was a big achievement because I would always go last. And yeah. And now I want to give um, this moment to talk about my gratitude. So thank you to all the teachers for teaching me all those things. Because if it wasn't for the teachers, I wouldn't have got this good education. So thank you. I also want to give a big thank you to Ms. Hill I want to thank you because you were always so nice and always had a nice smile and would never get that mad at us. And now I want to give this time to talk in Spanish. Uh, hola, quiero oh, hola, quiero tomar ese tiempo para hablar en español, para agradecer a mis padres por llevarme siempre a tiempo a la escuela y por ponerme en esa increíble escuela. Gracias, mamá y papá. Okay, thank you. Leah Miner. Sorry, I can't walk in heels. <laughs> You're doing great. Oh. Confident, kind, and unapologetically bright. When Julia walks into the room, her presence is felt and she is seen. It isn't necessarily her volume, unless her punk metal is being played for all to hear. It isn't her height, although her hair, when fully on display, can certainly fill a good foot of circumference around her head. When Julia walks into her room, the room, her reputation precedes her. She walks in and you know she is there. She's ready to engage, to participate, and to contribute. Even when she's in a bad mood, she is willing. I have seen her push through the most difficult of days. She knows when to put down her blinders and just get the job done. On behalf of all your teachers, Julia, thank you for your tenacity. Julia also has what the British call wit. A mental sharpness and inventiveness, a keen intelligence and ability to use words in humorous and often dark ways. <laughs> I appreciate her wit, and on many occasions, we've kind of gotten into a verbal wit war, yeah? Back and forth we go, ideas back and forth are past, dark humor back and forth. Thank you, Julia, for your wit. It is also no secret that Julia is a talented artist. Here at Beechwood, she has created murals to show off her knowledge of lines and curves, colors and tones. 
Her art is proudly featured on the class of 2022 sweatshirt. We have all been the beneficiaries of her creativity from our participation in musicals, art, drama, and in thank you notes written to teachers and random acts of classroom doodling. On behalf of the staff, Julia, we thank you for your creativity. You are here today for us to look at you in gratitude for the legacy you're leaving behind. As your time at Beechwood comes to a close, I am deeply grateful for how you have given and shared yourself with all of us. We're going to miss you. Julia, thank you for being you. Congratulations. Bye-bye. <laughs> um, hey, my name is Julia. I can't remember many of my earliest memories, to be completely honest. When someone mentions Kinder, I immediately think decapitated gingerbread. It may be a long stretch, but I blame Beechwood for my nightmares. <laughs> After that fateful day, Chucky ended up in my nightmares every single night. He just stood there, decapitated. I still love Beechwood, don't worry guys. Throughout my time at Beechwood, I've met some amazing teachers, some who I'm, whom I consider my friends. One teacher who's influenced me the most during my time at Beechwood is Mrs. Hill. Um, thank you, Mrs. Hill, for helping me to strive and do my best. She's taught me how to keep a good worth ethic, even though at times I do get distracted. And she has to remind me to stay on track. Not too long ago, she said something along the lines of, Julia, stop goofing around, let's get to work. She was visibly surprised at how lazy and all over the place I was. At least, that's what I think. I just remember trying to hold in my laughter. Mrs. Hill has been what I like to call my second mom. She's given me ramune, jello, gummies, dried sardines, boba, and so much more. She's also given me advice on having to do with some issues I've had. I've only had good memories when I think of Mrs. Hill. She's a great teacher, mother, and friend. She's a great everything. Thank you, Mrs. Hill, I love you. Mrs. Hill just needs to sign some papers to be one of my guardians and things will work out. <laughs> Mom, I'd like to say thank you for everything you've done. You've kept me on track, cooked amazing food, especially those tamales and nopales, <laughs> been my shoulder to cry on and my number one supporter. You've done so much for me. If I kept talking about you, I'd probably get kicked off the stage. But thank you, Ma, for helping me on homework you sometimes didn't understand, and especially for helping me on that long and exhausting application process, which I really don't want to go through again. Because of you and many others, I want to continue what I love doing. I want to thank my dad for constantly believing me. And, well, I'm going to just recap a story. One time when um, somebody had said something to me that, like, you know, made me really sad. I went to the car and I was crying to my dad. And he was all like, oh my gosh, forget those losers. <laughs> and he said, I'll take you to the store, which like, you know, any Japanese store. And he was like, I'll get you everything you want. You just need to tell me. And I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> so I was really touched by that. And he just, he's always there for me, just like my mom. I wanna thank myself for getting through my math work and tests without crying or giving up. Just thought I'd add this in because the struggle was real. I was always crying on my math test. Thank you to everyone who's been there for me. Ale, Irana, Senya, Taylin, and Monty, and many more. There are no secrets to success. It is the result of preparation, hard work, and learning from failure. Colin Powell, thank you.
please join me in welcoming Ms. Pamela Langford to the stage. <clears throat> I get to speak to you today about Zenia Hernandez. I want you all to know that I am only here giving this speech because this young woman was kind enough to let me know that I'd better get my act together and show up for her. When she came into my room right before finals to ask me how many speeches I'd be giving, I told her maybe zero. When this comes up every year, I tell the kids that if it isn't me giving their speech, it's because I know that the person that is giving it loves them at least as much as I do and is gonna do an amazing job. And that people sign up super fast because they're so excited. This did not work for Xenia. She looked a little hurt, honestly, and she said, Mrs. Langford, you need to fight for me. So I knew right then I was gonna do everything I could to do this speech. I actually appreciate this opportunity to show up for this girl. Zenia, you've been full of delightful surprises the entire time I've known you. Whether it was performing in our school musical, like a semi-pro, singing lead at the little kids rock concert, finding out about your major obsession with BTS, or that you showed up to your eighth grade hike wearing pearls, I have loved watching your journey to the amazing young woman that I see here today. You've literally brought me nothing but joy the entire time that I've known you, and I feel lucky to be your teacher. You have always been a solid student, a really good friend, and a girl who truly values her family. I've never been worried once about your principles. So as you head off to Midpen, I want you to take two things with you. One is that you are absolutely right to give me the chance to, to, to show up for you. I think that in life, a lot of people need to be taught how to treat you, excuse me, and good communication is the key to success almost in any arena. The other thing I'd like you to take is this cake. I got you an amazing cake because we had a date to make a cake before COVID. I got sick just a week ago and we did not make the cake. My phone number's on that cake. Text me, we're still making that cake. I love you, congratulations. My name is Senya. I've been at Beechwood since kindergarten. I've made lots of memories, some that I'll cherish forever, and others that I wish never happened. I'm grateful for all the Beechwood staff who have been a part of my journey. As I grow, uh, as I grow older, I'll always remember the friendships I've made and lost here, and the inside jokes I've got to make with each and every one of the friends I met made here. Whether it was laughing with, <laughs> it was laughing with someone about a specific hand gesture or joking about a quote. Small memories like this are the ones that made my experience at Beachwood so much better. I'd also like to thank some of my family. This next part's in Spanish, so if I mess up, pretend, pretend you didn't hear that. Um, en mis momentos más orgullosos y difíciles han habido cuatro personas que siempre han estado a la par mía. Mi mamá que siempre me ha dado la atención y amor que necesite. Ella fue la que me enseñó que no se necesitan las cosas materiales para ser feliz, sino el amor y cariño de alguien para sentirnos amados. Mi tía, que es como mi segunda mamá, ella siempre ha cuidado sobre mí y es por ella y sus consejos que soy la persona que soy hoy. Mi tío, que también ha sido como mi segundo papá y siempre está ahí conmigo cuando lo necesito. Me hace reír con las bromas que hace y nunca falla poner, ponerme una sonrisa en la, uh, me, en la cara. Y de última, pero no menos importante, es mi hermana. Aunque nos peleamos, todavía la aprecio mucho. Siempre está ahí con, cuando yo necesito hablar con alguien de mis problemas o ella, <ríe> habla lo de, lo de ella, cuando me saca en medio de la noche para comprar una hamburguesa o sorbete. <ríe> 
y cantamos canciones tan fuertes que a lo mejor toda la ciudad nos pueden escuchar. Los cuatro son las personas más importantes para mí. Me han dado el amor que no se puede comprar. Los amo mucho y estoy muy feliz de que ustedes puedan estar, uh, pueden pasar este momento tan especial conmigo. Once again, thank you to my family, my friends, and this amazing community. Well, I can do this now. <laughs> I want to thank you all again for being here today. It means a tremendous amount to all of us. You came in together and you're going to exit together. I want to give a special thank you to Ms. Kirkendall for working with the students on these beautiful speeches. You guys were a class act. Absolutely. I want to thank Mrs. Harrington uh, for the audio, visual, and just all of that support. Really appreciate it. And I know that you're recording this today. Hi. An extra nod to Giselle, her assistant. Thank you so much. Thank you to all of the staff um, for, for the support and for speaking today. Lewis Hughes, Coach Hughes, thank you so much for being here with that camera and the, the, just the warmth and, and the support. I appreciate it. Uh, he's not here. I want to give a nod to Bruno Lopez, um, who has just, yeah, you guys know. You guys know. Ms. Jimenez. Love you guys. Let's rise, put our hands together for the graduating class of 2022. Congrats. enjoy the gift bags, the yard signs, the banners. Those are all for you. Any, there's lots of food, please. We are thrilled you were here. Have a beautiful day and congratulations. Other person. Jose.